It can't be denied that as far as martial arts movies go, the best ones come from Asia, particularly Hong Kong during their action heyday, which arguably was the 70s, 80s, and first half of the 90s. That said, martial arts movies were making a foothold in the United States as well, thanks mainly to Bruce Lee Mania following the release of Enter the Dragon. Before that movie, very few actors in Hollywood seemed like they were credible martial artists, with perhaps the exception of James Coburn, a student of Lee's who pulled off some pretty good-looking moves in the otherwise silly R. Man Flint movies. Stephen Queen also had training, but didn't really use martial arts on screen. Up to then, though, the most notable users of martial arts in movies usually revolved around judo guys, with James Cagney showing off some good moves in the film Blood on the Moon, while Spencer Tracy, who was heavily, heavily doubled, demolished Ernest Borgnine in the classic thriller Bad Day at Black Rock with only one arm. But it was in the 70s that fight sequences really started to get better, with the Asian influence particularly notable in black exploitation movies due to the fact that many of the stars, including Fred Williamson and Jim Kelly, had legit training in martial arts. When Chuck Norris came along towards the end of the decade, you started to see white actors dip their toes into martial arts a little bit more, but sometimes the results weren't pretty, such as when Richard Burton used drunk food to beat up a racist in the otherwise abysmal melodrama, The Klansman. It was in the 80s that action in American movies started to get good, although the way they were shot often didn't quite match up to what was going on in Hong Kong films, with a great example being the climactic fight between Mel Gibson and Gary Busey in Lethal Weapon. Both actors had been extensively trained in a variation called Jailhouse Rock, which was popular in prisons, but there was too much rain and close cutting to really showcase the moves. That said, there are some great martial arts movies that came out of the US in the 80s, 90s, and of course now, and there are loads of great ones that are being made all the time. So here's our list of the best American martial arts movies ever made. To note, movies like The Matrix or John Wick, which marry martial arts with gunplay, didn't really make the list because it wasn't quite fair. This is dedicated more to straight up martial arts mayhem. First up is our honorable mention, the undisputed sequels. So if you know action, us mentioning these sequels probably established us as somewhat legit as director Isaac Florentine and his two leading men, the great Michael J. White and Scott Atkins, brought something new and fresh to the DTV world. Both guys were very charismatic, could really, really fight, and the first two sequels are arguably more famous than the now obscure Walter Hill movie their sequels to. The carryover was that Michael J. White was playing the character that Bing Rames played in the original, but eh, there's not much continuity between them. You could actually jump in with Undisputed 2 or even Undisputed 3 and not really be lost. Number 10 is Kill Bill. Quentin Tarantino's Kill Bill, of course, pushed the envelope for martial arts mayhem, but then again, being a student of film, should you expect anything else? Tarantino had Yen Wu Peng as a choreographer, plus the street fighter himself, Sonny Chibo, along with the very proficient David Carradine, but he really only got to show off his moves in a now deleted sequence opposite Michael J. White. Plus, there was Uma Thurman, who was in peak physical condition. For my money, the best fight sequence in the films is actually the first one, where Thurman goes at it with Vivica A. Fox, but the House of Blue Leaves sequence at the end of Volume 1 is a classic as well. Number 9 is John Carpenter's Big Trouble in Little China. At the time, the movie was a giant box office flop, but years later, people finally caught on to what it was and started digging the fact that John Carpenter was making a beautiful Hong Kong-style action fantasy movie in the vein of Mr. Vampire or Zoo Warriors. The martial arts in this beats pretty much anything else that was happening in American action movies at the time, even if much of it is wirefu in that classic wuxia fashion. Number 8 is Above the Law. You can't really do a best martial arts movie list like this and not include Steven Seagal. Granted, he never really made a pure martial arts movie in his heyday, but the ultra-violent Aikido style he broke out in Above the Law and those first few movies were highly influential on American action movies of the era. At his best, Seagal was excellent, but it could be argued that the lean and mean Seagal was only ever really present in those first five movies, with everything after Under Siege kinda downhill, which is too bad. Number seven is Revenge of the Ninja. Canon Pictures did more to bring ninjas into the mainstream than just about any other movie studio. While their first ninja movie, Enter the Ninja, is a bit of a joke, the sequel, Revenge of the Ninja, which elevated the first movie's bad guy, Shogazugi, to hero status, is really slick. The director, Sam Furstenberg, also did a great job with the first two American ninja movies, thanks to the untrained Michael Dudikoff being a gifted mimic and athlete, who likely could have been a JCVD level star had Canon put more money into his movies. I should also shout out briefly if we're talking about the American Ninja movies, Steve James, who played his co-star, 
Steve James was this amazing martial artist who was handsome, charismatic, but never really got to play a lead because sadly, he died very young in the early 90s. Number six is best of the best. While the notion of casting James Earl Jones as the coach of a national martial arts team is almost as silly as the fact that the overweight Chris Penn plays one of their best fighters, Best of the Best is still one of the most legit martial arts films of the era, at least as far as the US went. It mixes the sports genre with martial arts and gets the attitude of competition better than a lot of other films this ilk, with it emphasizing sportsmanship and the surprising bond you establish with your opponent no matter who wins in the end. Philip Bree is terrific in this thanks to the fact that his skills are legit, but Eric Roberts, despite no training, also quits himself quite well thanks to the fact that he took the choreography very seriously and got himself into peak physical shape for the role. Number 5, a classic, The Last Dragon. Martial arts movies had a major cult status in the inner city and The Last Dragon is Motown's tribute to the genre, with a young black martial artist named Timac, our likable lead, Leroy Green, aka Bruce Leroy. The music in this is great, of course, because it's Motown, and you get DeBarge's Rhythm of the Night, a great song if ever there was one. With the movie All But Stolen by Julius Carey as Shonuff, the Shogun of Harlem. Carey wasn't trained, but he proved to be a good mimic, and really, attitude is everything sometimes. Plus, this also had the gorgeous vanity as the love interest. Man, she was hot. Number four is Kickboxer. While often overshadowed by Bloodsport, Kickboxer helped bring Muay Thai into the mainstream, and the movie features Van Damme at his best, with terrific training sequences, an awesome final battle between JCBD and Michel Quissy's Tong Po, and Van Damme shaking his ass in that bar fight. Also, who could forget the opponents wrapping their hands in bandages and dipping them in broken glass, which is sent up brilliantly in Hot Shots Part 2. Number three is Bloodsport. More JCVD with this the movie that made him a star. We've talked about this a lot here on Joe Blow, but it introduced the term kumite into the mainstream and also showcases a wide variety of different martial arts styles. This movie was clearly made by people who truly know the genre and I think it's Jean-Claude Van Damme's best. Number two is The Karate Kid. While I maintain that the fights in these movies were never great, with Ralph Macchio's fighting skills leaving a lot to be desired, he's actually a much better artist on Cobra Kai, which has amazing fights. This movie did more for martial arts as a practice than just about any other movie on this list. It led to an explosion in karate schools across North America, and thanks to the gentle discipline and philosophy of Mr. Miyagi, it proved that karate and martial arts in general is an art form that could help a lot of people discover an inner strength they never knew they had. In fact, I will say this, as a kid, I was in karate, thanks to the Karate Kid movies, and it did a lot for my confidence and got me through some very difficult years. So, I mean, the Karate Kid's gotta be at the top of this list, right? But there's one more movie that just narrowly beats it, and it's Enter the Dragon. Bruce Lee's one and only American movie became up posthumously and was such a cultural phenomenon that it led to a kung fu craze that was so big, within a year you had Roger Moore's James Bond and kung fu fighting his way through the Man of the Golden Gun. Lee's so damn good in this, but John Saxon also quits himself well in the fight scenes, and Jim Kelly in some ways is almost as iconic as Bruce with that massive afro. He's great in this, and actually if you like Jim Kelly, you should definitely check out Black Belt Jones, which has an amazing opening sequence, even if the rest of the movie is not all that great. So, that's our list of the best American martial arts movies. Thanks so much to EJ Tangonan, who also edited this video, for helping come up with this list. He's a guy who really knows martial arts movies probably a lot better than I do, so wouldn't have been able to do it without him. And make sure to let us know in the comments what you think are the best American martial arts movies.